Welcome to our lecture online. Here's the second part of that same problem that we just did before in the previous video when there was no energy lost in the collision. But what we're going to do now is we're going to assume that as the block hits the spring, there's some energy lost in the collision. Let's say that it's 30% of the kinetic energy gained by the block as it, as it fell down from a height of 40 centimeters by the time it reaches the spring. Now because of that, it might be a good idea to make the reference height equal to zero right here where the object meets the spring instead of the maximum uh, or ex except um, instead I should say the point where the spring will come down to after the block hits the spring and you'll see in just a moment why we did that. We still want to use the same equation as before but now let's go ahead and see what this looks like. First of all is there any work put into the system? The answer is no. Plus, what is the original potential energy? So let's call this equal to the height. And so we'll say the original potential energy would be mgh plus zero because there was no initial kinetic energy. And that equals the potential energy final. Now, what's the potential energy final? Well, the final potential energy will be the energy stored in the spring and then, of course, we have a loss of potential energy as the object gets squished down. So that means that potential energy final would be one half kx squared minus mgx because it's below the reference height equal to zero. There's no kinetic energy, so plus zero. And so this here is the potential energy final, in case we're wondering. And then we do have energy lost. 30% of the potential energy it initially had, which was converted to kinetic energy when it came down here, so it would be 0.3 mgh. So that's the energy lost. Now when we want to solve this, notice we can move this to the other side, and so this becomes 0.7 mgh is equal to 1 half kx squared minus mgx. And again, it looks like we're going to end up with a quadratic equation. Everything needs to go to one side of the equation. So we can say that 0 is equal to 1 half kx squared minus mgx. And then we'll bring this across minus 0 0.7 mgh. Now we'll go ahead and plug in what that is equal to. So we say 0 is equal to 1 half times k, which is 1960, times x squared, minus m, which is 2, times g, which is 9.8, times x, minus 0 0.7, times m, which is 2, times g, which is 9.8, that's 9.8, times h, which is 0 0.4. All right, working out what those numbers are, we have 0 is equal to, that would be 980x squared, minus 2 times that would be 19.6x, and minus, let's see with a calculator, what that equals to. So we have 0 0.7 times 2 times 9.8 times 0.4 equals 5.488. All right, 5.488. So now we have to solve this quadratic equation. So x is equal to minus b, which is 19.6, plus or minus the square root of, and that would be 19.6 squared minus 4 times a, which is 980, times c, which is a minus 5.488, all divided by 1960. All right, let's see what that equals to. So let's see here, <clears throat> now, 4 times 980 times 5.488, we're going to add that to plus 19.6 squared, take the square root, so that would be 148. All right, so we have, this is equal to 19.6 plus or minus 148, all divided by 1960. Well, it's not going to be a negative because x is not going to be a negative quantity, so we're going to add the 2, so we add that 2 plus 19.6 and then divide by 1960, and the answer is 
0.55 centimeters, so this is equal to 0 0.0, oh, zero, I'm missing a zero here, 0 0.0855 meters, which is equal to 8.55 centimeters. And so that's the new compression of the spring. Considering we lost 30% of the energy, now the spring will only be compressed 8.55 centimeters instead of 10 centimeters. And yep, that's the way it's done.